Japan and Belgium should get married. There, I said it. Growing up in southern United States, one of our favorite comfort foods is chicken and waffles. There are a few dishes that check all the flavor boxes like this one does, with the sweet and sour fluffiness of the buttermilk waffle and the crispy and sometimes spicy fried chicken on top. I did this style on my channel way early on, but I recently had an epiphany to make this a cultural fusion. More specifically, I had an authentic Belgian waffle in Washington DC for the first time, and I wanted to know why it tasted so much different and better in my opinion than my buttermilk waffles. Then I thought what better to pair that with than with karaage or Japanese fried chicken. I may not be the first person to do this, but I've never seen it before, and I think it's an absolutely worthy combination, so let me show you how I do it. I'll start with the Liège waffles, which are authentic Belgian waffles. And to answer my question from DC, what separates these from American buttermilk waffles is two things, and that is yeast and pearl sugar. So instead of a liquid buttermilk batter, we're going to be making a yeasted dough, more like brioche. So I'm starting with 180 mils or three quarters of a cup of warm whole milk that's around 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And as usual, I'll dump in seven grams or one packet of active dry yeast and around a teaspoon or four grams of sugar. And then I'm just going to mix that together until it becomes a frothy boy. Into my stand mixer, I'm adding 400 grams or about three and a half cups of all-purpose flour, 36 grams or three tablespoons of light brown sugar, and six grams or one teaspoon of kosher salt. Mix that for a few seconds with the dough hook before you add in your frothy boy. And also a couple teaspoons of vanilla extract, and then I'm just gonna mix that on medium to start hydrating the flour. And as that starts coming together, you can add in your two whole eggs. And then lastly, I'm adding 113 grams or one stick of softened butter. Just scrape in a tablespoon at a time or so just to let it incorporate. And then you can bring this up to high and let it knead itself for eight to 10 minutes. And throughout that, if you notice that your dough is too wet like mine was, you can add more flour. It's kind of a trial and error thing every time. I ended up adding about 50 grams more here for like 450 grams total or three and three quarters of a cup. As usual, when it's done, it should be sticky but not stick completely to your hands, just kind of feel tacky. And you should definitely be able to stretch it a good bit without it tearing. And once it's kneaded, transfer it over to a large grease bowl, and I would let that rise for about two hours at room temperature, at which point you can punch it down and move straight to the next step, but I like to rest it overnight if possible. I feel like it makes a more fermented taste, which I like. So if you have the foresight and the time, I recommend you throw this in the fridge after you let it rise. And then the next day, you just have to let it come to room temperature before you move on, so I'd say like two to three hours before you're ready to use it. Then just dump it onto a lightly floured clean work surface and get it coated a little bit in flour. And this is where we're going to knead in our special ingredient, which is pearl sugar, specifically Belgian pearl sugar. You can probably find this at a local grocery store, but you can also find it on Amazon like I did, so I'm going to link it below. And it's literally just pearls of sugar, kind of like sugar cubes, but a little smaller. What these will do in the waffle maker is melt into these crunchy bites of sweetness. It's heavenly. I just poured over one and a half cups or like 300 grams or so. Then just take a minute to knead it into the dough with your hands. Make sure every piece is stuck in there, so turn it over a few times and work it in. At this point, you can divide it up. Mine made about 10 waffles total, and I used a scale for accuracy. Each of mine weighed about 115 grams, but you should be able to get away with anything from like 8 to 12 waffles. These will be smaller than your typical homestyle waffles, by the way, but they're much denser, so they will make up for it. And finally, I just rest these under a towel for another like 45 minutes or so just to proof them one more time. You can use pretty much any waffle maker for this. I have a cheap one that I use and it worked fine. You might just have to adjust the settings a little bit to see what works best for this dough. But once you get it preheated, just spray it with a little oil and then add a piece of dough. Spread it a bit and then smush it with the top. Again, this is not going to spread all the way out, so don't worry. And just keep an eye on it. You don't want it to burn on the outside, but you also don't want the inside to be undercooked. These should come out nice and firm when you're done and the outside should have some nice browning on it as well. For reference, I set my darkness setting about halfway, and my waffles took about 30 seconds to a minute after the waffle maker said it was done. And you can just keep these warm and your oven set to its lowest heat setting. And yeah, that's it. These are more time consuming than the waffles you're probably used to, but I think it's well worth it. But we are not stopping here. This is nothing without our sidekick dish, which is karaage. I did a sort of similar Korean chicken recipe about a month ago, so I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. I'm cutting about a pound and a half of chicken thighs into pretty nicely sized chunks. If it's too small, it'll be pretty easy to overcook in the oil, and we want a pretty good ratio of meat to breading. I'm going to add this to a plastic bag and then add my marinade ingredients, which are a couple of tablespoons of soy sauce, a couple of tablespoons of sake, and then about three cloves of garlic and about a three inch knob of ginger, which I've both grated on a microplane. And then that's it. I'm going to massage that really well until everything is coated evenly. And then I would marinate this for anywhere from like 30 minutes to four to five hours. I wouldn't go longer than that, especially not overnight because it'll start to break down the chicken. Meanwhile, for my dredge, I'm doing 
doing one part of potato starch to one part of cake flour. You could also use corn starch and all purpose flour here. And then I'm just seasoning with salt, pepper, and MSG. I don't really measure this because this is just seasoning the outer breading of the chicken. And once I'm done marinating, I'm gonna coat a few pieces of chicken at a time. And I learned this technique where you kind of just squeeze the breading onto the wet chicken. Not too hard, but enough to get the dredge to really adhere to the chicken. Otherwise, it can kind of break off and be really easy to peel off after it's done frying. Once I have my pieces coated, I have some peanut oil heating in a wok. I fry these a little lower, about 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Some recipes call for double frying, which can definitely work and make the outside crispy, but it also runs the risk of overcooking the inside and making it tough. So I find that frying it around 300 degrees Fahrenheit cooks the inside at a nice timing to where the outside is nicely crispy. And if you want to double check with a thermometer, I pulled mine at around 175 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, you can keep those in your warm oven until everything is done. So we've got our Liege waffles and our Karaage chicken. In order to bring these together, I decided to make a blueberry maple syrup. I feel like the sweetness of this complements both of the dishes well and ties them together. I think this is pretty forgiving so I didn't measure anything super specifically, but I'm adding about a cup of frozen blueberries to a pan as well as a half of a cup of water, and then I'm adding in the zest of a half of a lemon because I have it, and to sweeten this I'm starting with 2 tablespoons of maple syrup, but you could use honey or corn syrup or just regular sugar. I'm heating all of that over medium and stirring it pretty frequently. The blueberries will start to break up a bit and release their juice and become sweeter, and the syrup will also reduce and thicken, so I'm gonna let that boil over medium for like 10 minutes. and. In order to help it thicken even more, I'm going to add a cornstarch slurry, which is like a tablespoon of cornstarch and another tablespoon of water that I mixed together beforehand. At this point, you can pull it off heat if the water is reduced enough to your liking, and I'm just finishing by squeezing about two teaspoons of lemon juice into it. Adding the acid at the end will keep the brightness of it, and it'll also cut through all the sweetness. You can taste that and see if it needs any more types of sugar, and you can add that if needed, but I'm just going to let mine cool down a bit and then add it to a mason jar. And this will store in the fridge for a while, but I'm going to use it all up on my waffles. I like my syrup served cold, but you can serve it warm if you'd like. But now that we've got all our components, we can plate up. I'm doing a couple of waffles because I'm hungry, but one should be a good starter, and just a few pieces of that crispy chicken and now just a generous dose of that lovely homemade blueberry syrup. I'm topping mine with just a little bit of powdered sugar that I put through a sieve just to make it look a little prettier. But there you have it, this is my take on cultural fusion chicken and waffles. This was just an idea that I had while I was riding my bike and I was really hungry. So let's see if it was a good one or not. Time to taste test. There's not really much to say, you know what you're looking at. And I've been staring at this for a few minutes now, getting all the pictures and cleaning up, so I'm really ready to dive in. How many other cultural fusions have been good ideas like this one? Hopefully this one. There's no way this is gonna taste bad, right? I guess we're gonna find out. Got a little bit of everything, the Belgian waffle, the karaage, and the blueberry syrup. Cheers. Hmm. Yeah, I guess this is exactly what I thought it was gonna be. This Belgian waffle just steals the show. It's a completely different flavor profile and texture from your southern normal waffles. The yeastiness and the fermentation of it just makes it so much better. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, adding those pearl sugars. Who would have thought that makes something taste better? In this karaage, I was a little worried about the blueberry syrup meshing with it, but I mean, it works. There's a lot of sweet sauces that you coat this kind of fried chicken with. So a syrup definitely works with this too. Super crispy. So is this an improvement on the traditional chicken waffles? I would say yes, but that's still its own thing. This is something different, and I think there's a place for both. And I think a lot of people might enjoy the traditional version better than something like this. It does have a lot of deep flavor, and it could clash with some people's palates, but definitely not mine. This is super heavy though, so you need to make sure that you have enough calories or that you're gonna be doing a lot of exercising, if that's your thing. But do you have any other fusions in mind that you'd like to see done, or do you know of any that aren't that popular that you could tell me about? That's gonna be it for this one. Thank you all for watching, be blessed, and I'll see you next time. Hmm. It's literally food. What are you doing? I don't know. I guess it's not cat approved.